Hello there, it's Alita, and I am just here with your Technique Tuesday. Here at my art studio at Alita Art Studio and Gallery in Camas, Washington, and bringing to you live today um, a session on doing watercolor tulips. So if you've ever been interested in creating with watercolors and you were not quite sure how to make it look beautiful or how to work with even watercolors, I'm just gonna give you a step-by-step -step today on just a very simple, tulip painting that you can do using just basic watercolor set. So stay tuned and follow along. Hey there, I wanted to demonstrate and show you today how to do just a basic watercolor tulip. So you could use either a pencil, this is just a regular pencil, or if you would like to use a um, Stabilo pencil, I find that Stabilo pencils are really wonderful. The, they do usually disappear with water, but there's a slight color that you'll see with it in, when you put the water with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my regular pencil today. And I'm gonna just show you, we're gonna do a nice big tulip bulb. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make this round shape, almost like a giant flattened U shape. And then I'm gonna just do a little curve line that kind of waves down for my first petal. And I'll do another little curve line that goes up for my second petal. Then I'm gonna come in and do one other one here and maybe another little petal there behind. And we could do just a, a small one in the very, very back. For my stem, I'm just gonna come straight down like a little curve line here and come all the way off my page. And the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing and come all the way off my page. I would like to do maybe one leaf because I really love leaves. So I'm just gonna do a curve line that's gonna come up. If you'd like to do a second leaf, I mean, why not? You could do another small wavy line um, to kind of create they're they're really long elongated stems and um and leaves that the that the tulips have so a lot of times i'd come back through and erase this um very so i could just see very lightly or if i was using like i said a stabilo pencil you don't really have to erase but because i want you to be able to see as we're working along i'm going to leave it so I've already put in here and activated my watercolors. I'm just using a praying set of watercolors. Um, they're great in terms of just a, something you can find at almost any store and a little bit better quality, I think, than some of the other ones. Uh, I really do like Yarka and um, also Koi. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna put water here on my outside my outside um, petal. And I'm just gonna fill this all in. And there's gonna be a slight space. I'm not gonna bump it right up to my other petal, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave a little space and then add some water into this petal as well. Now red is my favorite color. So I'm gonna start with that at the bottom and watch what happens when I drop some red in at the base here. It's gonna move around, which is really cool, in a really beautiful way, but it's gonna follow along wherever the water is. So notice if I only have water coming and I didn't touch them here, there's gonna be a little bit of space there, and it's only gonna to move to where the water goes. Now I can come back in here and just drop in maybe a little bit of orange because I do love some orange to kind of mix into my red. I might drop in just a little bit of that color here. Let it start to anywhere, like I said, where it's um, wet is where the, the color is gonna move. And maybe even a tiny bit of yellow here to make some of that, again, try to move things around, but let those colors blend in together. And you could add more water, or if you like the amount of water that that has, that's great. I'm gonna come right down into my stem. Now I'm just using water, but I have a little bit of color on my brush because I didn't clean it super great. I'm not gonna to touch right into my tulip there. I'm just gonna fill this in where my stem goes. And then I'm gonna come right into my leaf here. And I'm gonna just add water to my leaf and fill this up all the way in 
wherever I want to move the color to. So remember, it's almost like a little maze. When you drop your color into it, it's gonna always be moving to wherever you have water. So I'm just gonna come back in here and fill this in like this, okay? And then I'm gonna start actually, I'm gonna do pretending that my light source is coming from the right. I'm gonna do with a little bit of my blue on the left and I'm just gonna follow along. And you can see how that's starting to kind of meld into the other areas. Because again, my light source is coming from the right, I'm gonna fill this up at the base. It's gonna be darker at the base and then just kind of follow the outside of my leaf with my darkest color first. Let that kind of blend into each other. And the same thing, I'm gonna do this along the edge at the very base to bring that down. I just love how, how watercolors move and just to see the different colors blending into each other. The next color I'm gonna do is my green. And again, I'm just gonna drop this in at the base and start to kind of blend it a little bit and move it in where it's meeting up with the blue. In the middle here, I'm just gonna go right down the middle and let that blend in with some of the blue. And then on this other one, I'm just gonna come in and fill this up and just let those kind of meld together. Now I'm gonna come in with my yellow and for this highlight part, I'm just gonna let this yellow come right in and we're gonna let it all kind of mix together and clean my brush in between because I don't want them to you know, get too mixy. And the same thing over here, I come in and just put a little bit of a highlight on the right side. So wherever I feel like there's gonna be a little highlight, I'm gonna do some yellow. And then along the stem to the right side, come right in. Now you could have started with your yellow and then kind of added your dark in as you went. That's another option if you want to make sure that you got the yellow nice and clean. Kind of come right in here and then bring that down. So we still have the rest of my petals to do. So I'm, again, not going to touch. Oh, I already did. <laughs> I said not, don't touch this and then look at how that just turned red. I'm going to try to keep a little space so that I don't pull all those colors. And maybe this is a good time to grab a smaller brush so I have a little more control. But here would be the next little petal that I would do. I would draw maybe from my orange and more of my yellow because I want this to be a little bit lighter on the inside. I'm not really coming in to do a lot of shading yet for these other parts. And here the same thing. I, I think the, the big thing is we sometimes use watercolors like we would paint with regular paints or acrylics and we try to just really brush it in where really you're just putting some water in and then you're letting the paints kind of move around how they want to move around. So I'm just dropping some of these colors into there. A little bit of the yellow. I have already some orange in there. And one thing we haven't really talked about is the shadowing. So I think it would be great to be able to come in with maybe just a teeny bit of my purple. And I know that if I'm following this along here, it depends on how wet that is, um, to make a shadow behind, it's gonna move in and blend in with those other colors. But if it's a little bit more dry, I have a little bit more control in kind of where that shadow is gonna go. So I can kind of pull that shadow out a little bit and then come right here and using just some water, letting some of that blend in. So that creates a nice little shadow behind. And I can do that with my purple, like even in here, if I wanted to create some, you know, a, a little teeny bit of, of the lines where I wanted to make some designs, I can come in with some shadows. Purple is always a great one for pushing in some other deeper, darker shadows. 
And the same thing, I could be very careful along this line, but I could also come in to give a little bit of a shadowing behind here. And that's going to, anything that's gonna be behind, you're gonna get a little bit of a shadow. So anytime you've got a petal that's underneath or you're gonna have a nice little shadow underneath there. And the same thing right here at the base as I'm coming down, I might want to grab a little bit of this purple to kind of bring this down. And as I come down, then I have this other little extra lines. Again, you can make this as detailed after each layer, like after when it's when it starts to dry, you can come back in to add more um just more colors or if i wanted to reactivate this and make this a little bit lighter i could just add water there and even using my paper towel come in and kind of blot it and that will pull up some of the um you know some of the color if you didn't want it that intense i do want to add a little bit more of this red at the base because i love it and i think it's just beautiful so i might just come back in with that second layer with my red and give it another little boost. And maybe I take that red a little bit more in with this little petal on the inside. And then a little bit, add some of that there on the very, very back. But we do want this to be lighter. Again, where's my light source? Oh, it's coming from the right. So if that's the case, then we want these to be a little lighter here where that light source would be hitting and darker anywhere that you see in little spots like here would be behind because that's going to be where this is going to be more shadowed. And so that's basically it. One of the things you can do just for fun if you wanted to create more interest, of course you could come back in now with your background if you wanted to add a background color you would want to be very careful again not to um, not to lose or mix the colors into the background so you wouldn't want to you'd want to wait till this dries and then you'd want to be very careful not to mix like your blue or whatever color you'd be doing for your background into where the flower is at so um, just being a little bit more aware but you could also come in which i think i'm just adding a little blue here for a little darker of a um, shadow behind on this little leaf or this little petal. Um, the other thing that you could do, which is kind of cool, is we can add a little bit of a splash. So it's where you come back in and you can, I'm just gonna add just a little bit more of that in there. Get a little bit more of that color on the inside and let that blend. Yeah. So you can play around with this. You can keep coming back, like I said, and keep working on it, doing a little bit more, a little bit more. But um, the end of the time, you're gonna get, you're gonna get these beautiful, and I think that's what I love about watercolors is I'm never quite sure where it's gonna go. Um, but the last thing you could do, which is really fun, is just do a splatter of an, another color over the top. And I love blue. I think blue is a nice, um, you know, just a nice little splatter color. So I'm going to use a lot of water and just a little bit of blue like this. And then I'm going to dip back in my water again. And I'm just going to come in and just do a, a little bit of a, a splatter of this over. Now there, I, I tripped right on, on the pedal, but that's okay. Sometimes it's a happy little accident. Do a little, little Bob Ross action. So I'm just gonna come in and anywhere that I feel like there needs to be some splatters, I'll do that and we'll let this dry. If I need to do another layer, I can come back and then add another layer. And that is how you do a watercolor tulip. Thank you so much for following along with our Technique Tuesday um, on just learning how to do some painted tulips, watercolor painted tulips. Um, I think the lesson here and the life lesson, especially with watercolors, is 
really just letting go. Um, you know, you are not always going to be able to control, you know, you, you can kind of lay out, like when we were doing the tulips, you kind of lay out the pattern or you're able to work through and kind of get some basic big rocks into place. And then the, the reality is the watercolors do what they want to do. You know, it, it depends on how much water is on your paper. It depends on, um, you know, the amount of paint that you dropped in. It depends on the paintbrush that you used. It, there's so many different things that can play a different role for how the watercolors are going to move and change and do different things on your piece. And so in life, I feel like that's a really great example of saying we can create some boundaries. We can we can really just kind of create some structure in our lives. And I and I really believe that like creating some some good patterns, some good habits, some good life skills, you know, so you're creating those types of things, but really the colors of life are meant to mold and change and do things unexpected like that we would not really think is going to um you know some little surprises and like wow that moved into an area that i didn't expect it to move into or wow that color turned out just different than i was was anticipating and um the more we try to control once we once you've set those boundaries once you've kind of created a a um a basic guideline in you know your big rocks are in place like what what are your values what are your core beliefs what are your uh, things that you would really say this is something that's worth fighting for and having those things in place and then just letting life flow letting the colors meld together letting those things that are out of your control i you know several times throughout the time when i'm painting these different tulips i'm seeing things happen that i wasn't expecting and if i tried to jump in and change the direction of where the paints were going or i tried to blot it or 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 control it it would lose the the beauty and the freedom and the um and the imperfection so if you can remember this and learn to, like I said, put some structures in your life, put some big rocks in place, put something in there where these are my hardcore lines. These are the lines that I am not going to bump out of and, and those are your core beliefs. What do you really value? What is really something that's important to you? But besides that, the little things, let yourself be surprised. Let yourself be in a place of where you, um, it, you're unexpected and it's going to be such a much more beautiful experience if you can let go and stop trying to control it and stop trying to make it exact or make it perfect or do exactly what you're thinking but instead lay it out put your lines in drop your water in and then sit back and be amazed as things move and morph and change and blend and mix and it's going to be so much more yummy the experience is going to be so much more beautiful than if you had made it exact or controlled it or fought against the process and so that's just something for you to think about today um, as you go along your day be open for letting things be a surprise be open for colors in your life to change or um, to grow or to to mix in ways that maybe you didn't expect and see just see just see how you feel about it after you let go and that is your life lesson with your technique tuesday today uh, just don't forget that you can follow along on my website alitaart.com for more free classes and other art and uh, other art tutorials and other things that I like to share as well as my book that's going to be coming up. So be stay tuned for that. It's called Nobody Dies in Art Class. And I would love for you, it's the lessons that I teach in art class that I also am learning in my life. So it's a little bit of both. And, um, and that's it for today, you guys. Don't forget that you're a 10, you're a 10, you're a 10. All right, ciao for now.